Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes until everybody joins. We just have some technical issues. And uh, I'll start right away. So I'll just wait two, three minutes, and then I'll start. I'm just gonna wait a couple of minutes and then I'll start right away. Um, just because we have some technical difficulties. So I'll just wait until everybody joins this stream. But don't worry, it's gonna be an interesting session. Uh, we'll still try to complete everything that was scheduled. So no worries. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm just gonna start right away uh, by introducing myself. Hopefully everybody will start to join in during the session. Uh, my name is Rasam al -Ashqar. I'm a electrical engineering graduate uh, from the University of RIT. And I've actually made, uh, my main focus was artificial intelligence. Um, I work in fun robotics as an instructor here. And today's session is gonna be all about AI uh, what is AI? Do we see AI around us nowadays? The purpose of AI and all of that. So we're going to actually also have some fun activities and a quick competition questionnaire uh, with some prizes at the end. So let's start with the basic question right away. What is artificial intelligence? Uh, what comes to your mind when you hear these words? Uh, is any AI around us uh, at the moment? And when do we actually think this concept started? So as a matter of fact, a lot of people nowadays think that the concept of AI is brand new, at least came after like 2010, which is a wrong conception because AI has been around, or the idea of AI has been around for a long time actually. We'll get into that in a later stage of the moment. And uh, is any AI around us right now? So some people might think that, you know, AI is all robotics or dangerous, you know, uh, take over the world. That's what we see in movies. Uh, actually, I can tell you AI is around us almost every day of our lives nowadays, especially if you're holding your smartphone every day. So uh, with your smartphones, you've got Siri, which is an AI system. Uh, on your laptop, you've got many AI um, applications like face recognition, for instance, and you know, all that. And what comes to mind when you hear these words? I mean, right away, artificial and intelligence. So intelligence is another word for being smart. And artificial is just something that is not, uh, you know, something that is man-made. So like a computer is an artificial object or a TV is an artificial object. So let's talk about how intelligence is formed and how can we apply this, you know, way of forming intelligence in a human being into an actual AI system or into an actual artificial object. So intelligence, um, uh, I, I, like, you know, a fun way for me to explain what is intelligence is by comparing it to how a baby learns how to walk. So a baby, you know, is born, uh, at the moment he's born, he's all, always looking around him, basically processing everything that he sees. And at a certain stage, he reaches a point where he's like looking around and seeing everybody walking. And he thinks, you know, everyone around me is walking. So, you know, it must be cool. Why don't I try it? And just on his own, you can notice that he starts to crawl and then walk. Nobody's forcing him to do these things. So he learns how to do it just by observation. And, you know, an AI system or an artificial object is um, to actually give it intelligence. It's very similar to teaching a baby how to walk. You're allowing it to observe or learn from data. And then it learns um, the basic concepts of whatever you're trying to teach it, like walking or how the face looks like, etc. So, you know, a misconception, like I said earlier, people think, you know, these objects are AI and that's it. 
like for example, R2D2 from Star Wars or the Terminator, Wally, and you know, this cartoon, flying cars and all that. Actually, AI is much broader than that. The reality of AI is very basic. It's a code or a program, you know, a software that was written by a human. And it's a special type of code or program uh, in order to give an artificial object human intelligence. So us humans, we've got the brain that allows us to think. We're basically copying the brain or how it works using code or programming uh, to make an artificial object uh, act that way. So have we seen AI around us or have we used it? Most definitely. I, I don't know you guys, but um, I know for a fact that we've used AI before. For example, if you guys logged into Amazon and you've purchased a product one day, you might notice that the next day you're receiving emails of recommended products or products that you can maybe purchase alongside whatever you purchased that day. How can the computer know or how can Amazon know um, that this is an appropriate recommended product? It's using AI. Um, Google Maps, for example, that takes you to a certain destination. Yes, it's using GPS, but it's also using AI, for example, with their voice recognition. Siri, which all of us know what Siri is if you've ever had an iPhone. You speak to it, it understands your language, it understands what you're saying. Uh, it's a part of branch of AI called voice recognition. And smart cars, you know, like Tesla, for example. So a quick activity that I would like to do, uh, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear uh, the computer sound here. Okay, so I've got four sounds here of different instruments, like a guitar, a piano, drums, etc. I'm actually going to play these sounds, and I want you guys to participate in the YouTube chat. Maybe let me know if you think this sound was created by a human or an AI, so you know, a computer. So let's start with the first one. Sorry, let me play it right here. So I'll just go full screen. Okay, so that was the first one. Quick guitar, uh, someone playing the guitar. Let's go with the second one. Another guitar synchronization. Third one, I think that's a piano. Just let me make sure the voice is low. Okay. All right, sounds nice. Final one, drums. Okay, so that should be enough for you guys to maybe guess if it was played by a human or a AI. So I see a lot of people saying human. I see some people saying AI, questioning the instrument. Okay, so yes, I see most of you guys are saying human, all right, which is not bad. Um, might be shocking that all of these samples were created by an AI except the second one. So it's very common uh, that um, a lot of people think that all of them were created by an AI. Uh, sorry, that all of them were created by human because they sound very human-like. But uh, funny enough, it's actually all AI except the second one. So this is just to show you how advanced uh, we've reached in technology or how advanced AI is. I see a lot of people shocked saying, what? All right, so yes, it is, it is very shocking. Um, AI has reached a stage where it really can copy humans. So if you remember, I defined AI as being uh, basically providing human intelligence to an artificial object. So you can see how easy it's become to provide near, like perfect human intelligence to an AI. 
uh, allowing it to play an instrument. So if I ask you right now, how long do you think it will take you to master the guitar? Some people say six months, some people say a year. As a matter of fact, to actually master the guitar and become a professional at it, you would need a year or two. And an AI, like the one you see in front of you, takes four months to master a guitar. So you can see how much faster it is than a human. So I have a quick video here that I'd like to play that will explain artificial intelligence and different branches of artificial intelligence. And then I will share with you guys a quick game and a link for the competition today. So let's focus. I'll go full screen again. So. Every day, a large portion of the population is at the mercy of a rising technology. Yet few actually understand what it is. Artificial intelligence. You know, HAL 9000 and Marvin the Paranoid Android. Thanks to books and movies, each generation has formed its own fantasy of a world ruled, or at least served, by robots. We've been conditioned to expect flying cars that steer clear of traffic and robotic maids whipping up our weekday dinner. But if the age of AI is here, why don't our lives look more like the Jetsons? Well, for starters, that's a cartoon. And really, if you've ever browsed Netflix movie suggestions or told Alexa to order a pizza, you're probably interacting with artificial intelligence more than you realize. And that's kind of the point. AI is designed so you don't realize there's a computer calling the shots. But hmm? that also makes understanding what AI is and what I'm it's in, not I'm a little complicated. In basic terms, AI is a broad area of computer science that makes machines seem like they have human intelligence. So it's not only programming a computer to drive a car by obeying traffic signals, but it's when that program also learns to exhibit signs of human-like road rage. As intimidating as it may seem, this technology isn't new. Actually, for the past half a century, it's been an idea ahead of its time. The term artificial intelligence was first coined back in 1956 by Dartmouth professor John McCarthy. He called together a group of computer scientists and mathematicians to see if machines could learn like a young child does, using trial and error to develop formal reasoning. The project proposal says they'll figure out how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. That was more than 60 years ago. Since then, AI has remained for the most part in university classrooms and super-secret labs, but that's changing. Like all exponential curves, it's hard to tell when a line that's slowly ticking upwards is going to skyrocket. But during the past few years, a couple of factors have led to AI becoming the next big thing. First, huge amounts of data are being created. Okay, so just quick pause to the video uh, to go over what was said so far, because this is a long one. So um, she was explaining that it was expected uh, by a lot of people that AI will, I mean, be much uh, more advanced uh, by today's time. For example, people were expecting flying cars nowadays and uh, all that. And they were saying that that is what AI is. In reality, um, AI isn't, you know, flying cars and like robotics taking over and all that, as I said. It's actually, you know, as long as you guys are sitting at home and saying, hey, Siri, please order me this from Amazon or hey, Alexa, uh, get me this from Amazon, then that is AI. That is the reality of AI behind us. And uh, what was mentioned again is that data is a very important factor in AI. Nowadays, um, a lot of people care so much about data and the collection of data. You know, big companies are acquiring data. That is because data is a very big factor in AI. Without data, you cannot have a smart AI system. Um, all right, so let's continue where we left, left off. I'll go full screen again. Computers can actually make sense of all this information more quickly. Because of this, tech giants and venture capitalists have bought into AI and are infusing the market with cash and new applications. Very soon, AI will become a little less artificial and a lot more intelligent. Now the question is, should you brace yourself for yet another Terminator movie live on your city streets? Not exactly. In fact, stop thinking of robots. When it comes to AI, a robot is nothing more than the shell concealing what's actually used to power the technology. That means AI can manifest itself in many different ways. Let's break down the options. 
First, you have your bots. They're text-based and incredibly powerful, but they have limitations. Ask a weather bot for the forecast, and it will tell you it's partly cloudy with a high of 57. But ask that same bot what time it is in Tokyo, and it'll get a little confused. That's because the bot's creator only programmed it to give you the weather by pulling from a specific data source. Natural language processing makes these bots a bit more sophisticated. When you ask Siri or Cortana where the closest gas station is, it's really just translating your voice into text, feeding it to a search engine, and reading the answer back in human syntax. So in other words, you don't have to speak in code. At the far end of the spectrum is machine learning, and honestly, it's one of the most exciting areas of AI. Like a human, a machine retains information and becomes smarter over time. But unlike a human, it's not susceptible to things like short-term memory loss, information over... Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video right there. Uh, the reason is we're getting into um, advanced stuff right now. So what was said so far was that you know, data is a very important factor, as I said, and we have big, big companies that are, uh, you know, plugging into cash to collect this data and create AI systems that are much smarter than others. So what was also said was that AI is not a brand new idea. As a matter of fact, AI came along all the way in the early 20th century, uh, exactly like 1950s, where we had um, Alan Turing, for example. I don't know if you guys have watched the movie The Imitation Game. It's a very nice movie that uh, talks about the first computer that was created or the first AI that was created. So Alan Turing in, in 1956 created a paper called uh, The Artificial Intelligence, and it was coined by someone called Ma uh, John McCarthy. So he was the first person that came up with that term, artificial intelligence. And then you see 1960s, a lot of studies had uh, happened on this idea and uh, comparison between machine and human. And then today, We've got all the different branches of AI, like machine learning, predictive models, you know, commercial AI with these robots that you can buy from the store, or the big human robots that you see, like um, Sophie, I, if I believe that was her name. And you can see from this uh, picture right here the different branches of AI. You start with artificial intelligence, and then you branch out to machine learning, NLP, and all that. This is getting too advanced into AI. As a matter of fact, but he, uh, a fun thing that I would like to talk about is the risks and benefits of AI, because a lot of people think that, you know, as I said plenty of times, AI is going to take over the world. You know, a self-driving car one day is going to drive you into a wall or off a cliff. And that is very silly to think about. It's actually a theory, which was never denied, but never proven either. And this theory is called super intelligence. So no longer artificial intelligence, it's called super intelligence. And it's basically talking about how AI systems will train them to become way smarter than humans and they'll basically take over us. I would, my opinion is, I believe that as long as we are training it, so it will only know what we know and it can never know anything that we don't. So it will never be smarter than a human being. So that will be the presentation, the PowerPoint part of this workshop. Now we'll get into some fun stuff like the competition and the um, quick draw activity. So uh, in conclusion, just to conclude what we uh, saw so far, uh, we understood how humans think in general and how we can apply that to AI through code or programming softwares. And we can clearly identify the different technologies that have AI today, like for example, Siri or your know, face ID in your iPhone is also an AI system and the different benefits and risks of AI. So I wanna share my screen to this game that you can see online. You can also, uh, join me here. So let me look, actually take a look uh, at the questions. Remember that there's a 20 second delay between you and I. So someone here asks, um, wouldn't AI developing be too dangerous? So yes, that is a common uh, misconception. Uh, no, AI is not too dangerous. At the end of the day, AI is just a new technology. So over the past 20 years, we've had plenty of new technologies come out. I mean, 20 years ago, we didn't have a smartphone like the, uh, like the iPhone. Um, we had, I mean, basic iPhones, right? Or I'm not sure, 2010, or 2000, in the 2000s, what we had, we had dial-up connection. So, I mean, Wi-Fi is a new technology. These smartphones are new technologies. No one back then used to say, isn't it too dangerous to have an iPhone? So AI is the same concept. It's just a new technology that nobody knows the limit of. I mean, in 10 years, 20 years, it can be so powerful, but it can never, I don't think it will ever take over the world or to be too dangerous. So yes, someone here says we're going to have teamwork between 
uh, AI in humans, yes. Um, I, I, I believe that could be something that can happen. So here, quick draw, maybe you've seen it before. It's the world's largest doodling data set, and it's an AI experiment. Actually, I'd like to play a game here and show you how it works and then explain how quick draw can guess what we draw. So I click on let's draw. It says, draw me a whale in under 20 seconds. I mean, I don't even think I can draw a whale, but let's see. I see line or garden hose or fish or shoe. Okay. So I mean, I drew a terrible whale. I have no clue what you're drawing. <laughs> it says I have no clue what you're drawing. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. It says draw floor lamp. I see hockey puck or nail. Oh, I know. It's floor lamp. No, it guessed it. It knows it's a floor lamp. Draw a cat. I'm just going to skip that one. Draw a mouse. Okay, maybe. Actually, that is very difficult to draw. I see bread or mushroom or table or ant <laughs> or bed. Okay. Oh, I know. It it's it. mouse. All right. It's mouse. Draw a toothbrush. I see line. Oh, I know. It's toothbrush. Right away. And then draw a horse. I'm just going to skip that one. Oh, cancel. Okay, so I'll just try to draw the horse. I see circle. Or peanut. Or sleeping bag. Or trombone. I see toothpaste. Or cow. Or dog. Or bed. Or tiger. So I'm a Sorry. terrible, I'm a terrible I drawer. I know that you guys are all laughing at me right now, but um, you can see that it managed to guess floor lamp, toothbrush, mouse, and the idea is that I want to show you how it can guess. So it, right here it says that our AI has basically saw what you draw and visited the data to see 50 million different drawings made by real people on the internet. So why don't why don't I show you this data that it, uh, Quick Draw is talking about? So let's take a look here. These are all the different objects that Quick Draw can guess. I believe there's like, I mean, 50 or 60. Uh, for example, here it can guess an aircraft carrier, an airplane, or if I scroll down, it can guess ice cream. Uh, let me see if you guys have any questions. <laughs> okay, I see a lot of people laughing at me. So I see penguin, piano. These are all the different objects that it can guess. So if I click on one of them, for example, let's say Quick Draw told me draw a alarm clock. So these are thousands. As a matter of fact, it's 113,000 pictures of alarm clock that real people drew and submitted to Quick Draw. So if I was to draw an alarm clock that looked anywhere closer to these 113,000 images, then the Quick Draw would guess what I drew by comparing my drawing to what all these drawings stored in the database of Quick Draw. Uh, let's actually look at another one. For example, um, giraffe. So you can see there is 122,396 giraffe drawings made by real people on the internet. If you see, of course, you yourself can take a look here. If you see anything that doesn't belong here, you can delete it and you can basically help Quick Draw become smarter. So how does Quick Draw guess? It basically takes your drawing that you're drawing in real time, compares it really quickly to all the data that it has stored in the database, and then it can guess your guess. Uh, it can guess what you're trying to draw. So this is how AI works. Without data, it's very difficult to make an AI system or an artificial object smart. So here, what is my artificial object? It's the computer or my website. And it's basically, we apply the human intelligence to it by giving it data. So this data in reality, us humans, all this data is stored in our brains. In a computer, we'd store this data in the you know CPU or the central processing unit of the computer, which I think anybody who here is a gamer would know what the CPU is. So let me see if anybody has a question. All right. Okay. So I can see a lot of people that are trying to be, um, that, are, that are laughing at me because I, my drawings were terrible. All right. So let's continue. Actually, I want to start uh, the competition. I'll share with you guys a link. Um, I want you guys to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. So I'll just quickly um, 
end the share screen here. And I'll go back to sharing my PowerPoint. Okay. So I'm about to share a link on um, the chat. All right. Uh, I'll pin the link. You can see it all the way on top. Uh, it's not the link that you have at the moment. This is the link for quick draw. So I removed that pin. I'll share a link to a questionnaire. I think it consists of four to five questions. Uh, please pay attention to what I'm about to say. It's very important that you enter your full name in the questionnaire. It's actually one of the requirements in the questionnaire. And then there's a couple of questions about AI and things that we spoke about in this session. Um, I want you all to try to answer them to the best of your ability. I know there's a lot of students watching me here right now. I think there's like 80 plus. So um, pay attention to the rules. The first three people that submit this questionnaire, I can view your answers right away from my screen. And the first three people will actually receive a gift certificate uh, given by us in Fun Robotics. So I'll share the link. Um, let me know if you guys can see it. I'll share it in a moment. So right here. Pinned in the top comment is the link to your um, questionnaire. Uh, you'll be asked to submit your email address, your full name, and then there is uh, four questions basically, with one being a bonus question. Whoever answers it the first will be able, eligible to receive some gifts given by us in Fun Robotics uh, voucher for you know 50% off as, uh, courses that are given by us. Let's actually review your answer. So I'll give you some time, five to ten minutes, and then I'll announce the winners. Remember, there is a 20-second delay between you and I, so. Just bear with me. In 10 minutes, I'll, uh, what's it called, announce the winners. So the link, you can see it on the chat. Go ahead and join the um, questionnaire and I'll be waiting on your answers. Let me know if you have any technical difficulties or anything like that. The link is right there on pinned on the top chat. Uh, if you can see it, please send me a message. All right, so I've already received many submissions. I'm just going to give you guys five more minutes and then I'll take a look at your submissions, all right? All right, I see a lot of people saying I did it. No worries. Whoever, whoever submitted it first will be the winner. So I'm just going to give enough time for everybody to try to submit the um, questionnaire and then I will tell you who won. saying I'm done it was easy and cool I'm glad to hear that I'll just give you guys two three more minutes and then I'll take a look and announce the winners
All right. So I'm, I'm actually reviewing the answers. Give me two minutes and I'll be announcing the winners. So I see here I've got 60 plus submissions. So just give me a couple of minutes to see who was the first one, first three to submit correctly. Right, so I've got the first winner. Let me see the second and third place. All right, I see here the second place winner. And then finally, let me take a look at the third place winner. And I'll be announcing soon. All right, let me see here. Okay, so the three, third, three place winners I've got them right here. All right. <laughs> I see people saying, why am I scared? No, don't be scared. Okay, so for first place, uh, the first place winner will receive a 50% discount on any course here at the center in Fund Robotics. So I'll speak more, more about Fund Robotics in a moment. First place winner is Anwar Khalil Abu Dahir. So Anwar Khalil Abu Dahir is our first winner. If you're here on the chat, you can celebrate. So Anwar Khalil Abu Dahir, again, you are the first place winner. You receive 50% discount from us in Fund Robotics for any course. So I will be, we will be contacting you as we have your email here to send you the voucher and discuss more what you can do. Second place winner, you will be receiving a 25% discount on any course here in Fund Robotics. The second place winner is Suhaila Ahmed Almari. Suhaila Ahmed Almari. So I see Anwar Khalil is saying, wow, thank you. Suhaila Ahmed Almari, you are the second place winner. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, but Suhaila Ahmed, you are the second place winner. You receive 25% discount voucher with us at Fun Robotics. Uh, I've got your email, so we'll also be contacting you. And then finally for the say, sorry, third place winner, uh, you will be receiving a 15% discount voucher from us at Fun Robotics. Saif Musa Amir Musa. Saif Musa Amir Musa. Sorry if I'm pronouncing the names wrong again. So I see Suhaila in the chat. You're welcome. Thank you. Saif Musa Amir Al Musa, you are the third place winner. And you'll be receiving a 15% discount from us at Fun Robotics. Again, I've got your email, so we'll be sharing the details with you. And we'll be reaching out. So. Thank you guys so much for participating in the questionnaire. Um, I'll be actually waiting if you guys have any questions to send me on the chat. Don't be sad, guys. Again, um, Fun Robotics is here to help you all, <laughs> all year long. So you can always um, give us a call and access what we have to offer. Remember, the live stream is being streamed on our channel, Fun Robotics. Uh, you can subscribe and take a look at all the AI videos. I see some people here saying that they joined late so we've got plenty of content uh, on our channel uh, ai and stem related fields so please take a look at the channel you can subscribe you know like and turn on the bell as they say and um, yes so for the winners we'll be uh, sending you guys um, emails with the voucher details and all uh, as i said you know some, some people are saying what's fun robotics it's a teaching institute you can say so you can take a look at our channel and you'll know more. So again, Anwar Khalil Abu Dahir won first place. Suhaila Ahmed Al Mari, you won second place. And Saif Musa, Amir Musa, you won third place with us today. So I'll give you guys some uh, a minute or two. Maybe you guys have some questions. I know that there's a delay between us. So if you have any questions, please, I'm more than happy to answer. So I'll take a look if you guys have any questions here on the chat and I'll answer it and then I'll continue. So yes, don't worry if you didn't win today, we will have much uh, more uh, live streaming competitions in the future and make sure you subscribe, as I said, and stay tuned for various videos and um, live streams made by us at Fun Robotics. So I have, a, I have a question here that says, do you have a website? Yes, most definitely. I'll be sharing the website with you uh, right now. 
Actually, I've got a moderator in the chat. Please, if you can share the website link on the chat and pin it to the comments for the people who can see that. Do you teach C++ courses? Uh, we don't specifically teach C++. However, we do teach Python, AI, AI different levels of AI, AI advanced. Um, Python as a programming language, we've also got it for the various different ages. Uh, block programming, for example. We also come, we got some STEM-related field courses and all that. C++ specifically, uh, you can come to the office any time of the week or give us a call. You can see the link, fund-robotics.com. I'll replace that as the pinned message. And there is another um, website, Fund Robotics Online. I actually pinned that. Uh, to what extent does distance does it distance us from effect? That is a very confusing question. <laughs> I'm not sure what the answer is. Why is AI important? That is a great question. So AI, uh, as I said, is a brand new technology. Any new technology is important nowadays. AI could be very important because it can help us in various medical fields. For example, AI nowadays can detect uh, cancer uh, at a very early stage. And we know that cancer patients, if the cancer is detected at a very early stage, then it's very important for that patient because if it, it could be cured at an early stage. Uh, even like at the moment, uh, during our time in this pandemic, uh, people created AI uh, systems that can uh, detect if someone has uh, corona or is more susceptible to receiving corona or the, or the COVID-19 virus, virus. So you can see that AI is very important in the medical field. It's also very important in factories, for example. So um, car manufacturers, AI could be very uh, useful there. So yeah, AI is a new technology could be used for everywhere, especially in the medical field, for instance. Um, any other questions? Okay, so you can see Fun Robotics online, the website up there. I'll be sharing the screen for the next session. It should start at 10.45 a.m. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be attending it or not. Do you teach Java? We're actually planning on creating a web development course in the future. At the moment, we do not teach Java, but we've got a game development, if that could be of interest to you. Uh, someone is asking three questions at once. <laughs> who started the program you're working in? Who, why did you decide to take this job and what happened in your life? So, I mean, I'm not sure if you're being serious, but I'll actually answer it. I studied electrical engineering. AI was a big interest to me because AI is a new technology, as I said, and it's taking over the world. So everybody needs to know what AI is. Um, that would be my opinion. I took this job because it's focused on AI in various STEM related fields, it's fun. I like to teach students, so I'm more than happy to see you guys one day and I uh, teach you a course or two. Do we need AI in school? Yes, AI could be in school. Developing games on what coding platform? Kodu, we use Kodu to develop games and uh, we're actually planning on adding another game development course maybe in the future. You can always visit and give us a call and we'll talk more about it. Okay, guys, so thank you so much. Again, my name was Rasam Al Ashkar. Uh, I'm glad you guys joined me today and um, congrats again to the three winners. Remember uh, to subscribe to the channel, to view various different AI videos and we'll know more about AI and other STEM related fields and also subscribe and turn on the post notifications for uh, future live streams where we'll be conducting various competitions with various prizes. So, I mean, thank you guys so much again and um, we'll see you at 10.45 for the next session. Thank you guys so much.
Okay, good morning guys. We're going to start in about five minutes. We're just waiting for complete attendance. And then we will start our sessions with the artificial intelligence and its applications in the world of AI. So we will continue in about five minutes.
Uh, all right, guys, so we are going to start with our workshop today. It's going to be about AI, or artificial intelligence, and its application. But before starting, we want to look into the meaning of uh, AI and what we think about it. So generally, what do you think comes in your mind when you hear these words, AI or artificial intelligence? Usually you would associate AI with robots or maybe machines that do certain type of things such as humans and similar things. Now, do you think there is any AI around us right now? Your computer, your laptop, we will see if this is true or not as we go on in the session. Now, there's also like a duration when this AI came to existence. Was it lately? Was it before? I mean, did AI just come out last year? We will see also during this session. Now, let's start with the concept of intelligence before going to artificial intelligence. So, intelligence in general is the ability of humans to uh, think of uh, actions and interactions between each other. So, let's have a look at this baby, for example. So. The baby, once they are born, they usually start with knowing almost nothing. But as they go on with their life, they test things and they get to know more things. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, when the baby first sees a vegetable, what will it do? Its, its natural instinct would be to eat this vegetable. So once it eats this vegetable, it notices, notices that it is not very tasty. So what happens is, the next time it sees a vegetable, it would avoid this vegetable. But on the other hand, when a baby, for example, plays with a toy, such as a, a ball or any other toy, doll toy, so this baby will actually notice that it is very fun to play with. So next time he sees this toy, he will, he will go and grab it and play with it. So that's how babies learn by experience. And another example would be, for example, walking and talking. So the baby would require uh, at least four to five years in order for them to learn how to like, efficiently walk and talk because they saw everyone around them was walking and talking. So they want to simulate this or imitate this movement, copy this movement. Now, let us move to the concept of AI in movies and in cartoon series. So I'm, I'm sure most, like, most of you are aware at least of one of these pictures uh, in movies or cartoon series. Now, in these movies and cartoon series, we notice that AI is always repre represented as robots. So with your own knowledge and with the knowledge of a lot of people, they would actually agree with this term that AI is only about robot, but is this actually true? Because what we see in the movies is that it's only like represented as a machine or for example, someone who can move just like humans or interact just like humans. Is this correct? We're gonna see. Now, another example is the humanoid robots. So humanoid robots, can be uh, like represent a human shape and also interaction. But is this the only uh, way that we can define an AI? Actually, that's not correct. Because AI is not only robots or machines. AI is a code, it's a program, and it's a software. And most important of all, it's an algorithm, but it is not like just usual coding. It is a special type of coding. We have, so basically it's a computer system that we program so that we can make it uh, imitate or copy human intelligence so that it can interact with us on a similar level and we understand each other. That this is the concept of AI. It is a brain that we design and then we code this brain to equip things with, with such as human interactions or do a specific task. Now, let's see this example. Have you ever 
dealt with AI before. Maybe you're familiar with some of these pictures or applications, Google Maps, for example, a GPS system, or Siri, maybe in your nearest iPad or phone that's next to you, you can notice that you have a virtual assistant, which is Siri or Alexa. Now, did you know that these are actually applications of AI? So Alexa or Siri, they know how to answer your questions because they were taught how to interact with humans. They were programmed in a way that they can know what we need or close to what we need. And similarly, we have, for example, a self-driving car. So a self-driving car would be uh, automatically moving. Obviously, you just sit in the passenger seat or even at the driver's seat and you're not driving your car. You will have someone or something that drives this car. So this is what we call an AI. So we programmed the, the car, the self-driving car, for example, to actually move from one location to another without us, you know, having our input like go left or turn right or, or go north and so on. So that's why we call it a self-driving car because it is an AI, artificial intelligence. So it was basically coded in such a way that uh, it will know what we need. Now let's move on to the first challenge of uh, today, which is I'm going to show you a series of actually four images or four samples of music, music sheets. And I want you to tell me which one of them is actually, uh, you know, made by AI. So this is a challenge for you. And I will make you listen to the first sample and we're gonna start with now. So this was the first music sample. Now you can guess, I'll give you the answers after we have reviewed all of them, but you can guess which one of them is actually made by AI. And we're gonna see at the end. So I'm gonna start the second music sample. So this was the second music sample. Again, you can guess whether it was made by an AI or whether it was made by a human band. Now this is the third sample.
So this was the third, third music sample. Let's watch the fi final music sample. This was the final music sample. Now you can guess which one of them, or which one, or not one, ones of them, uh, they were actually made by an agent or an AI uh, agent. So we have different types of music samples, and these were different music instruments. Actually, now that you have enough time to guess, or actually you know find out whether it is made by an AI or a human. All of them were actually made by an AI agent, except the second one, which one, which was this metallic. So this tells us that how far the advancement of AI has become. So AI is now even able to generate music in such a level that is very close to humans or even equal to a human, as we saw. We barely could able to, uh, were able to differentiate between whether this was made by an AI or whether this was made by a human. So all of them were actually made by an AI except the second one. So this is how amazing AI can be again, because in the late or in the past, like 10 years, there was a lot of advancement in the field of AI because we now have, you know, stronger computers basically. So now I'm going to share with you a video and I'm going to explain a little bit about it as we go on. Every day, a large portion of the population is at the mercy of a rising technology, yet few actually understand what it is. Artificial intelligence. You know, HAL 9000 and Marvin the Paranoid Android. Thanks to books and movies, each generation has formed its own fantasy of a world ruled, or at least served, by robots. We've been conditioned to expect flying cars that steer clear of traffic and robotic maids whipping up our weekday dinner. But if the age of AI is here, why don't our lives look more like the Jetsons? Well, for starters, that's a cartoon. And really, if you've ever browsed Netflix movie suggestions or told Alexa to order a pizza, you're probably interacting with artificial intelligence more than you realize. And that's kind of the point. AI is designed so you don't realize there's a computer calling the shots. But that also makes understanding what AI is and what it's not a little complicated. In basic terms, AI is a broad area of computer science that makes machines seem like they have human intelligence. So it's not only programming a computer to drive a car by obeying traffic signals, but it's when that program also learns to exhibit signs of human-like road rage. As intimidating as it may seem, this technology isn't new. Actually, for the past half a century, it's been an idea ahead of its time. The term artificial intelligence was first coined back in 1956 by Dartmouth professor John McCarthy. He called together a group of computer scientists and mathematicians to see if machines could learn like a young child does, using trial and error to develop formal reasoning. The project proposal says they'll figure out how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. That was more than 60 years ago. Since then, AI has remained for the most part in university classrooms and super secret labs, but that's changing. Like all exponential curves, it's hard to tell when a line that's slowly ticking upwards is going to skyrocket. But during the past few years, a couple of factors have led to AI becoming the next big thing. 
First, huge amounts of data are being created every minute. In fact, 90% of the world's data has been generated in the past two years. And now thanks to advances in processing speeds, computers can actually make sense of all this information more quickly. Because of this, tech giants and venture capitalists have bought into AI and are infusing the market with cash and new applications. Very soon, AI will become a little less artificial and a lot more intelligent. Now the question is, should you brace yourself for yet another Terminator movie live on your city streets? Not exactly. In fact, stop thinking of robots. When it comes to AI, a robot is nothing more than the shell concealing what's actually used to power the technology. That means AI can manifest itself in many different ways. Let's break down the options. First, you have your bots. They're text-based and incredibly powerful, but they have limitations. Ask a weather bot for the forecast and it will tell you it's partly cloudy with a high of 57. But ask that same bot what time it is in Tokyo and it'll get a little confused. That's because the bot's creator only programmed it to give you the weather by pulling from a specific data source. Natural language processing makes these bots a bit more sophisticated. When you ask Siri or Cortana where the closest gas station is, it's really just translating your voice into text, feeding it to a search engine, and reading the answer back in human syntax. So in other words, you don't have to speak in code. At the far end of the spectrum is machine learning, and honestly, it's one of the most exciting areas of AI. Like a human, a machine retains information and becomes smarter over time. But unlike a human, it's not susceptible to things like short-term memory loss, information overload, sleep deprivation, and distractions. So, so far we have seen in the video that the advancements of AI, which is at, the, at its early stages, it started in 1956, which is around like more than 70 years ago. So this tells us that during that time, no one actually you know, believed in AI because we did not have enough resources or computer power uh, to actually, you know, implement AI because AI requires a lot of uh, computer power. So that's why in the early uh, years, like earlier years, such as 10 years ago, we have more and more advancements of AI because we're capable of producing uh, very strong uh, computers that can actually handle AI code. And we also saw in the video the AI uh, in our real life. So everyone says that AI is a robot. Not everyone, majority of people actually say AI is a robot, but this is actually incorrect. AI is, or artificial intelligence, it's basically an intelligence that we program, like we said, the robot to handle certain things so that we can able to communicate with them in a very easy way. Just like how Siri or uh, a virtual assistant on your uh, device, like mobile or iPad, can actually interact with you very easily, right? Because it was programmed in such a way to understand what you're saying and be able to give you what you want or at least get close to what you want. So AI does not have to be a robot. So we, it just has to be implemented in a robot because this is like probably the most su suitable thing that we can have. For example, if we would like to have uh, a person who is moving, then we can make a robot that looks like a person, but it cannot move by itself. We have to code it, right? So we implement AI on this robot so that it can act like a human, yeah? So that was a bit of a summary of this video. Now we can also teach artificial intelligence, uh, you know, they, can, they don't start with being very smart. So we have to teach them as we are going. And we'll see this in the example uh, in a bit that I'll show you. So AI will not, just, it's just like a baby, yeah? It will start with knowing almost nothing. And then as it goes on and learns more stuff, it will be more capable of doing more diff uh, difficult stuff. Yeah, just like babies, for example, walking. However, we want to notice here that uh, babies, for example, take four to five years for them 
to learn how to walk and talk, which is a lot of time. Now, AI can actually learn this in a much, much shorter duration because AI does not require uh, emotions or sleep or food or energy to survive. I mean, like in terms of getting from food or emotions. So they have to have only a battery power and they also need uh, a program to code them. So they can be on for 24 hours for the whole week. So that's why they, they have the capabilities of learning faster than humans in a certain field. However, humans are you know, superior in this term because we know multiple fields, a lot of fields. AI is, can be, like at the current time, only like uh, surpassing us in a specific field, not in everything. So now this takes us to the advantages and disadvantages of AI, or we can say risks and benefits of AI. For example, the advantage of an AI is that it can allow us, for example, to have sent uh, like machines to the space. We don't have to send humans to space, right? Because they are capable of, uh, for example, uh, you know, they don't need oxygen to live. In the space, there is no oxygen. So that's why we can send machines, which is a huge advantage. Also, they, they for example, do tasks in less error, and they also do it more efficiently than humans, certain tasks, and faster. So that's some advantages of an AI, but there are also some disadvantages of AI. They, couldn't, they could make us a bit lazy because we can just, uh, for example, depend on an AI to do things and we'll forget how to do them in the future. Another disadvantage would be AI has actually no emotions. So it will be very annoying to deal with at this current stage because you know that you are talking to a robot or an AI if it is not like sharing a smile or uh, being angry, sad, and have emotions just as us humans. Now this takes us to the concept of super intelligence. Like we said, AI can be uh, smarter than us in a specific field only, but we are in general smarter than an AI because we know many different fields. Now this takes us to the super intelligence concept, which is which states that AI at a certain time could become uh, smarter than us in every single field. Obviously we do not have this currently, and it could not be actually true because it could never happen because the human brain is much more complicated than we think. So the super intelligence is only a theory or something that could be proposed in the future. Uh, it says that an AI can actually possess intelligence which is far more superior or better than us or the smartest human on earth. But because we should not be panicked or afraid because there is a risk in every te new technology. And also we can eventually program the AI to not harm us, for example, if worst case scenario, we uh, a programmed an AI to be you know, smarter than us in every single field. So this takes us to our uh, first exercise, which is going to be a Google experiment, which is an application of an AI. And I'm going to show you in a bit. It is QuickDraw. So QuickDraw is an application of an AI that can recognize drawing. So we basically, I'm going to show you a data set, which is a, a combination of data that is collected be, uh, because other users actually drew this data 
and we can see there are different types of pictures that other people drew. So basically this game is, or it's not actually a real game, it is a game made by an AI, or made with the concept of AI, and this game was created by Google. So this game will actually allow you to draw something, or ask you to draw something, and then it will guess what you drew. Now how does it know what type of, you know, uh, image that you're drawing? Basically, it is collecting previous information that 15 million or 20 million users actually drew before in the past. So this is adding more and more to the database, which is where it saves the data. And for example, if I drew an apple like this, we can see there are different types of or methods of drawing an apple. So whatever shape I go with, the algorithm or the AI will actually know that, okay, this is what I am drawing. I'm drawing a picture of an apple, yeah? So let me show you a video of quick draw made by Google and I'll show you, it'll show you how it actually functions. Hi, I'm Jonas. Hi, I'm Henry. Quick Draw is a game a few of us at Google made. You draw and the computer uses machine learning to guess what you're drawing. I see square, or suitcase, or canoe. Oh, I know, it's shoe. It's an experiment that uses some of the same technologies that helps Google translate, recognize your handwriting. To understand handwriting or drawings, you don't just look at what the person drew, you look at how they actually drew it. Which strokes did they make first? Which direction did they draw them in? You train the computer on millions of characters from hundreds of languages, and over time, it learns whether you wrote look or whether you wrote book. Training is a big part of how the computer can guess your drawings correctly. As people, it's easy for us to look at these three drawings and know they're all cats, but to a computer, they're very different. One is just a head, one has a full body, and one is just facial features. To get the computer to understand, you have to show it a lot of cat doodles. And then it starts to see patterns, like that almost all doodles of cats have pointy ears, a small nose, and whiskers. Of course, it doesn't always work. That's because it's only seen a few thousand doodles. But the more you play with it, the more it will learn, and the better it will get at guessing. Oh, I know. It's cat. We put it on the web for anyone to play with. We hope it inspires other people to think about fun ways to use machine learning. You can play it at g.co slash AI experiments. All right, so this video explains what Quick Draw is. It's a basically an application of AI, like we said. And you can access this website by going to quickdraw.withgoogle.com. And it will take you to the original page, which is this one. And then from here, you can actually click on Let's Draw, which will engage you in a game and it will guess it will give you a set of words and you have 20 minutes uh, 20 sec less than 20 seconds actually to actually uh, draw whatever word is showing you for example it's telling me here to draw a laptop in under 20 seconds it will give you six drawings and then it will tell you uh, if you actually drew something similar to a laptop or not based on the knowledge that it has so let's show you i'm going to show you an example and try a session with quick draw so the first one is a laptop so they're going to be in succession they're going to be one by one so we're going to start with a laptop so i can start with something like this for i example. see line or square then, or microwave or dishwasher i see computer for example oh, i know it will it's keep laptop to keep on guessing something until it is very clear for it or someone previously drew something similar to what I did. Now it's asking me another drawing, which is a leg. So a leg would look something like this. I see line or string bean. Oh, I know, you see? it's leg. It figured it out. So it will keep on guessing until it reaches the, uh, you know, the right solution. Now it's telling me to draw a newspaper. So this could be- I a, see line a tough. or table or square. I see pillow or picture frame. I'm not sure what that is. So I see oven 
or pool. So do you see or microwave. I could not draw or notebook. a newspaper or book. And it sorry, did not guess it. I couldn't guess it. It told me sorry, I could not guess it. So now I'm going to draw an owl. I see boomerang. Or baseball bat. It's a bit tough. Or cherry. I see shoe. Or rabbit. Or french fries. Or banana. Uh, I see dog. Very terrible at drawing. Or backpack. As you can see. Or monkey. So. Or bear. Will not guess an owl. Or duck. Sorry, I couldn't guess now it. Now it's asking me to draw a mouse. I see rainbow. Or keyboard. Oh, I know. It's mouse. It's already guessed it. So a cooler is a bit tough, and you can actually click here to skip. But I'm not gonna do that. I see street light. Or square. So. Oh, I know. It's cooler. It guessed a cooler. So after you're done with the sixth drawing, it will tell you which one it guessed and which one it didn't. As you can see, it has a check sign, which means it correctly guessed the word. And a check sign here, it correctly guessed the leg as well. But here, a newspaper. So it shows me it did not guess it. So if I click on this newspaper, it will show you what it thought you were drawing. So here it thought I was drawing something like a picture frame. Yeah. And maybe something like a notebook or an oven. Yeah. And now it's telling me how other people drew a newspaper, which means uh, how it guessed other people drawing a newspaper. These are an ex examples of and people, other people, other than me, who drew a newspaper. So this is what it looks like. You can actually include the word news and so on. A similar example would be, for example, if I click on the laptop, it shows me that correct match because someone else drew it in a similar way. And it's showing you how other people also drew similar way for the laptop. Yeah, and it's showing you the second closest match, which is the second guess of if it's not a laptop, then it's a computer. If it's not a computer, then it's guessing it's a microwave. Obviously, the more that you draw, you're actually teaching this program uh, or AI application more. So you're not realizing it, but you're actually teaching it as you're drawing because it saves your drawing and it adds it to its database so that it can for example, for other people, if you draw something like me in a newspaper, it could guess it as a newspaper. Okay, so I will give you guys uh, five minutes to try and guess and play this quick draw. You have the link here, I will zoom into it. It says quickdraw.withgoogle.com. So I'll give you guys five minutes so that you can try it out.
So that should be enough for the quick draw. You, have, you guys have tried it and saw how the magic of AI, we can say, that how it actually uh, recognized certain images based on what uh, you're drawing. Now let us come back so that we can conclude our uh, workshop. Just let us have a quick revision of what we have spoken about today. So obviously we first spoke about uh, how humans think and learn. For example, how babies start with knowing nothing and then gradually like they start with the stage of you know trying things out so that they can know if this is good or bad. For example, if they try on uh, touching a hot pan, they would know it will hurt them, right? And they will cry because it is very painful. So the next time they see a hot pan or a pan in general, they'll actually step away from it. That's how they learn because on, depending on previous experience, it actually caused pain for them. That's why they will avoid it. And similar to any other things. And this is not only applicable for only uh, applicable for only babies. It's also for us humans. Once we try a new thing, for example, a food, a new food that we have never tasted before, we can try it out. And if we don't like it, then we will just uh, not order it again or not make it again. And we also moved on to speak about uh, the concept of AI and how to differentiate it from movies and stories. For example, uh, cartoon series. They're all showing that AI is robots, it's only robots or it's machines that do certain tasks. This is not correct. Machines, they get implemented with AI so that they can have the intelligence similar to humans or at least close to humans so that they can make a specific task. So that is why AI is not only robots. AI can be your phone, AI can be uh, anything that is uh, implemented with intelligence, artificial intelligence that will mimic humans. And then we went on to identify what technologies enable AI today, for example, a self-driving car, for example, the virtual assistant, Siri, uh, GPS system that will actually talk back to you and so on. And then we also identify the benefits and risks of this technology, uh, just like, uh, for example, the advantages of an AI would be that it makes us do things faster. For example, in a, let's say a company that produces cars, we can have an AI that makes it easier for us to drive, for example, self-driving car. So it, it is much easier for us to use rather than actually us driving the car manually. That's one benefit of AI. an AI. There is also risk of an AI, which makes us a bit lazy, right? Because we do not, I mean, we depend a lot on AI that we tend to maybe forget how to do a certain thing or uh, we feel that we don't need to do it because AI can do it. Yeah. And obviously there's a, a lot of other benefits and risks of AI, for example, such as sending uh, like an artificial intelligent robot to the moon so that it can, you know, uh, investigate the area for us because it is hard for humans to actually go there. We would require food, we would require uh, oxygen and many more things. But AI would not require any of these things. And the, another risk of an AI we can say is uh, it is emotion, it does not have emotion. So it's emotionless basically. So it will feel a little bit you know, awkward once we are trying to talk to the, to the AI because they do not have the emotion of anger, happiness, uh, joy, or, and so on. Now, this was a brief uh, a briefing about an AI in general. Of course, it can be a lot more comp de deeply uh, spoken about, but that's it for in terms of the uh, PowerPoint or the introduction of an AI or the world of AI in general. So I would like to uh, 
I would like you to participate in the competition, which will be basically a survey quiz that the teachers will uh, that the teachers will actually share with you. And this quiz will have three winners. So the first three winners who actually answer all three questions correct will actually get uh, certain discounts on the courses that we are offering here at Fund Robotics. So the first winner will get 50% off. The second winner will get 25% off on a certain course. And the third winner will also get 15% off on a certain course. So I would like you all to please uh, participate in the survey quiz and we will announce the winners later and they will be contacted by us after the answers have been collected and and finally i would like to share with you guys our youtube channel and if you are interested in the concept of ai and stem related fields computer technology we provide content regarding this in our videos so i'd like you guys to please subscribe to our channel if you're interested in this and watch uh, videos that are related to computer technology and, and AI in general. So that's it from my side. And I thank you all for guys' uh, attention and that will be us, uh, it from our side. Thank you all for, for attending. The next session will start at 12.15. So, you can join now uh, the next session will be a different grade anyway so that's it for this session you can start at 12 15.
Hi everyone. Um, I will just be waiting for uh, everyone to join the session. And in the next five to 10 minutes, we will be starting the workshop. This is the AI grade 10 to 12, grade nine to 12 workshop. So by Fun Robotics, we'll be just uh, waiting for all the students to join. And hopefully we'll be starting by 12.25. For anyone who's just joined, we're just waiting for the remainder of the students to join the stream. And this, this would be the workshop done by Fun Robotics on AI. Hopefully we'll be starting in the next five to 10 minutes. And we're just waiting for the remainder of the students to join the session and then we'll start right away. The workshop will start in five to 10 minutes, just waiting for the remainder of the attendees to join. Whoever just joined, just uh, be patient until just the remainder of the attendees can arrive and then we'll start right away. There's just a slight delay between you and I, so bear with me on that. 
hopefully we can start the session by 12.20 to 12.25. Hi all, and to anyone who just joined, I just had to write it on the screen. The, we'll start the session in five minutes exactly, so by 12.25, we'll be starting the session. We're just waiting for everyone to attend the stream, as I think, I believe the students are coming from another workshop. So in five minutes, we'll be starting the workshop, uh, whoever joins, just be patient, please. The workshop is filled with some activities and a competition, so I'd like you all to attend and be active in the session. All right, the session will start soon. To anyone who just joined, um, we're just waiting for the remainder of the students to join the session. Uh, hopefully in the next three minutes, we'll be starting the workshop. Again, this is workshop is on um, AI, artificial intelligence. We're gonna be participating in many activities and there's a competition at the end with some prizes. So just be patient, we'll be starting soon.
<clears throat> All right, I see a lot of students has, uh, have rolled in. Hi, everyone. This is the session by Fun Robotics on AI. We're going to be participating in many activities and learning a lot more about AI and what is artificial intelligence. And in the next two minutes, I'll be starting the workshop. So hopefully I, uh, you all can be active and uh, pay attention. Okay, so we'll be starting the workshop now. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rasm Al Ashkar. I am a graduate from RIT University, electrical engineering specifically, uh, with a focus on AI or artificial intelligence. Um, I work here at Fun Robotics as a ro AI and robotics trainer. And today I'll be giving you the session on AI, what is AI, and we're going to be participating in um, some various activities together. So, all right. So artificial intelligence, AI. Uh, what is AI or artificial intelligence? What comes to mind when you hear these words? Uh, as a matter of fact, is there any AI around us right now? Or when do you think this concept started? So what comes to mind when we hear these words? Um, you know, most often, more often than we would like, uh, AI is misconcepted as a um, dangerous thing. So when you say artificial intelligence to someone that doesn't know much about AI, first thing that comes to mind is robots, dangerous robots, you know, the Terminator, um, basically artificial intelligence, uh, artificial, artificial objects that are going to take over the world. Uh, and this is false. AI is actually a broad word that could be divided into various branches. Um, as a matter of fact, is there any AI around us right now? Yes, most most of the times, more than you'd actually believe. I mean, everybody who's holding a smartphone, like an iPhone that I have in my hand at the moment, um, there is AI applications in it. First one that comes to mind is Siri, for instance. Um, that would be an AI application using you know, text recognition. Uh, when do you think this concept started? Again, there is a misconception that AI is a brand new term that came out recently, you know, maybe in the 2000s. Uh, that is incorrect. Actual inter artificial intelligence, the word itself, was first brought up by um, a scientist called John McCarthy back in 1956. And we'll dig deeper into the origins of AI and the advancements in AI um, as we go along through the presentation. So, I mean, that's cute baby right there. All right, so let's divide the word AI or artificial intelligence into two parts. I'll start with artificial. We all know the meaning of artificial. You know, it's anything that is man-made. So a PC, like a computer screen, would be an artificial object. A TV would be an artificial object. You know, the chair that you're sitting in is an artificial object. Anything that is man-made is artificial. Anything that is naturally made is just natural. So again, intelligence, another word that is quite common and we all know the meaning of intelligence. Another word for intelligence is smart, you know, being smart. So let's associate how intelligence is formed, starting by, you know, a newborn baby. A newborn baby is born unintelligent, correct? He's not smart, he doesn't know much information other than the basic nature of things. Intelligence comes as the baby starts, you know, to roam around, look around him and ask himself some questions. For instance, how does a baby learn? You know, uh, some thoughts come into his mind. You know, everyone around me is walking. You know, then that must be cool. Why don't I try to do that? And then the baby starts to walk around. 
you know, starts to crawl at a certain age and then, you know, stand up on two feet, balance. It does that all in its own. You know, maybe parents aid him a little bit, but just the fact that he started to crawl and try to do things, that is just the nature of how a baby's born. You know, he's looking around him, um, teaching himself, basically learning. And we're going to dig deeper into how a machine or an artificial object learns as we go along through the presentation. But that is just a basic concept. Looking around you, asking yourself questions is how intelligence is formed. So now that you know these basic, um, this basic definition of AI, again, it's a method of providing human intelligence or intelligence into an artificial object. So now that you know this, I would ask you, these following robots in front of you right here, do you think these are AI or this is how AI looks like? Is that only what AI is? For example, R2-D2 here from Star Wars. Do you think he is an AI robot? He is, but is that the only AI thing we have? Or WALL-E, for instance, or the Terminator, or this cartoon, I'm not sure the name of it, but, you know, flying cars, for instance. Is that what AI is? Because that's, since, since forever, people thought that AI is all about robots and flying cars and all that. It's incorrect. AI could be much, is much broader than that, as I said. For example, let's see this interesting video or that is from the movie uh, Space Odyssey. And uh, there's an AI robot in this video and uh, they, impl they basically implement it as a dangerous uh, robot. Let's see what it does. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Okay, so you can hear the humans telling the AI or the robot to open the door and it refuses saying, I'm afraid I cannot do that. So in the movie, they're basically showing that, that the AI became too smart and he can actually start to deny the human. Although the human programmed it to do these things, it starts to deny it. So this is how movies has been depic depicting AI since forever. I Maybe mean, this is back in 2001. So you can see why people have a misconception about AI, you know, being too dangerous or all about robots. I'm here to show you more about it and tell you that AI is actually much broader than that. So again, is AI all about humanoid robots, dangerous robots and all that? No, it's actually much more simplistic. The reality of AI is it's a code, you know, a program or a software. At the end of the day, it's an algorithm that was designed by a human to do special kind of tasks. These special kind of tasks is basically creating a brain, you know, a human-like brain for the artificial machine so that it can think like a human being. So again, the definition of AI is a certain code or program that was written to implement human-like intelligence into a, a machine or an artificial object. Let's continue. So have you dealt, dealt with AI before? I mean, I'm positive that all, all of us here have dealt with some sort of AI before. For example, let's talk about Amazon. You logging into your account and purchasing an item, for instance. Um, you might notice that sometimes you start to receive emails after the purchase of recommended products or um, you know, items that are frequently bought together, for instance. These, this is an AI that is actually doing these predictions for you. Uh, it's actually a, a branch of AI called classification or um, recognition. Can Google Maps or yeah, self-driving cars, for instance, if you've heard about this before, Google has created a car that can drive around with a GPS on it in order to show you how the street looks like. Um, it's not only the satellites up in the air that can um, track cars and all that. There's actually self-driving cars that map out how a road looks like that is driven using an AI, not a human. And most notably or most famous is Siri that we all have in our phones. Anybody who's holding an iPhone nowadays has Siri and has interacted with Siri before. So Siri is an actual AI that can um, basically do text recognition, another branch of AI, which we'll dig deeper into as we go along. And also weather forecasts. So nowadays we don't have just a person sitting outside, you know, licking his finger and doing this, waiting to see which wind direction is it gonna be? Is it gonna rain or not? Is it sunny or not? That is not the case anymore. We have AI systems that actually can predict the future seven days ahead or even months ahead. So as a challenge, this is a fun challenge that we'll do together. Unfortunately, the chat is disabled, but um, we'll still do the challenge anyways, and I'll talk about it. So we have um, four different musical 
uh, basically instruments here or musical uh, recordings that we're going to hear. Well, I'm not going to play it all, but I'll try to play some of it. Um, as a hint, there is an AI that has created, uh, AI could have created some of these, all of them, or none of them. And a human could have created also some of them, all of them or not. So I want you to guess whether an AI or a human has played the instrument. I cannot see your guesses, but we'll talk about it. So let's hear the first um, recording right now. I believe this is of an electrical guitar. All right, so that was the first recording. Nice tune, nothing, I don't see anything wrong with it. Let's see the second one. Okay, that was the second tune. So anybody here who plays an instrument, it will be actually challenging or nice for you to try to guess. So play along. This is the third recording. I believe this is a piano. Oops. <laughs> that was the answer. I'm not sure if you saw it, but let's continue. Okay, so that was the piano tune that was played. And then finally, we've got the drums. Let's hear that together. Okay, so I don't see any issue with what I've heard. I mean, they were all nice tunes. We've got the electric guitar, the piano, the drums, and all that. Why don't we, um, you know, try to guess together? So I know the answer, obviously. Most commonly, I have students that always guess that most of these were played by a human. As a matter of fact, this could be shocking to you. All the samples that we heard were created by an AI agent, except the second sample. So only the second one was played by a human. It was actually the band Metallica. And the rest, the first, the third, and the fourth were actually played by an AI or a machine. So this can tell you um, how advanced we've reached with AI nowadays. I mean, if a, if a human being needs to master an instrument like the electrical guitar and start to play it you know, prof professionally, for instance, he needs at least like two to three years to master it, or let's say a year maximum, minimum. But an AI nowadays can actually master an instrument in like four months and can play it much better than a human being can, as we've seen. So it was very difficult to guess what um, recording was played by an AI and what recording was played by a human. This is just a fun uh, activity to show you how advanced AI has become. All right, let's continue. So this is a quick video. Um, it's actually five minutes long. I will be cutting it in half and to explain what is going on. I would like you guys to pay attention to the video as it, would, it is a great transition to our next topic. Um, this is going to define AI and the misconceptions of AI, and then we're going to dig deeper and talk about machine learning. So let's see this together. Every day, a large portion of the population Sorry. And is at the mercy of a rising technology. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's continue. Technology. Yet few actually understand what it is. Artificial intelligence. You know, HAL 9000 and Marvin the Paranoid Android. Thanks to books and movies, each generation has formed its own fantasy of a world ruled, or at least served, by robots. We've been conditioned to expect flying cars that steer clear of traffic and robotic maids whipping up our weekday dinner. But if the age of AI is here, why don't our lives look more like the Jetsons? Well, for starters, 
that's a cartoon. And really, if you've ever browsed Netflix movie suggestions or told Alexa to order a pizza, you're probably interacting with artificial intelligence more than you realize. And that's kind of the point. AI is designed so you don't realize there's a computer calling the shots. But that also makes understanding what AI is and what it's not a little complicated. In basic terms, AI is a broad area of computer science that makes machines seem like they have human intelligence. So it's not only programming a computer to drive a car by obeying traffic signals, but it's when that program also learns to exhibit signs of human-like road rage. As intimidating as it may seem, this technology isn't new. Actually, for the past half a century, it's been an idea ahead of its time. The term artificial intelligence was first coined back in 1956 by Dartmouth professor John McCarthy. He called together a group of computer scientists and mathematicians to see if machines could learn like a young child does, using trial and error to develop formal reasoning. The project proposal says they'll figure out how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. That was more than 60 years ago. All right, so just a quick pause to the video to discuss what was said so far. Again, she started out by saying that AI is very um, misunderstood and it's not dangerous or it's not all about robots and like futuristic stuff. As a matter of fact, if you've ever opened Netflix, for instance, and watched a um, show, and then you've seen the recommendation of shows, usually these recommendations are very, uh, very accurate. They really actually know what you want to watch next. That is because there's an AI or, or a machine that was trained um, or given some human intelligence to guess these or to give you these recommendations. Or maybe if you've used Siri and all that. And then it was the concept of how AI was thought about years ago, many years ago, back in the 1950s. Um, she discusses how people uh, back then scientists were trying to see if they can create or make machines, the computers that were there at the time, start to uh, make calculations and think uh, similar to how a human does. Let's continue. Since then, AI has remained for the most part in university classrooms and super secret labs, but that's changing. Like all exponential curves, it's hard to tell when a line that's slowly ticking upwards is going to skyrocket. But during the past few years, a couple of factors have led to AI becoming the next big thing. First, huge amounts of data are being created every minute. In fact, 90% of the world's data has been generated in the past two years. And now thanks to advances in processing speeds, computers can actually make sense of all this information more quickly. Because of this, tech giants and venture capitalists have bought into AI and are infusing the market with cash and new applications. Very soon, AI will become a little less artificial and a lot more intelligent. Now the question is, should you brace yourself for yet another Terminator movie live on your city streets? Not exactly. In fact, stop thinking of robots. When it comes to AI, a robot is nothing more than the shell concealing what's actually used to power the technology. That means AI can manifest itself in many different ways. Let's break down the options. First, you have your bots. They're text-based and incredibly powerful, but they have limitations. Ask a weather bot for the forecast and it will tell you it's partly cloudy with a high of 57. But ask that same bot what time it is in Tokyo and it'll get a little confused. That's because the bot's creator only programmed it to give you the weather by pulling from a specific data source. Natural language processing makes these bots a bit more sophisticated. When you ask Siri or Cortana where the closest gas station is, it's really just translating your voice into text, feeding it to a search engine and reading the answer back in human syntax. So in other words, you don't have to speak in code. All right, so I promise this is the final pause, pause sorry, before we actually finish the video. But a lot of good information was said uh, during this time. We started out with talking about data. So data is a major tool or a major, um, very important tool in AI. Data nowadays is used um, a lot to build AI systems and make them smarter, <clears throat> sorry. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll dig deeper about it in a moment. And then she spoke about a branch of AI, which is being, she's talking about it right now, called natural language processing. 
So as I said, AI is a broad term, artificial intelligence is a big broad term that is divided into branches and there's many different branches of AI. It's not only robots. As a matter of fact, the AI lives in the brain of the robot. So for instance, us humans, our brain is right there, but for a machine like a computer, the brain would be like the CPU, for instance, you know, the central processing unit. So the AI would live there as code. It's not the robot itself. So let's now see the different branches of AI and then we can continue with our activities and competition. No, sorry about that. Reading the answer term books. So in other words, you don't have to speak in code. At the far end of the spectrum is machine learning. And honestly, it's one of the most exciting areas of AI. Like a human, a machine retains information and becomes smarter over time. But unlike a human, it's not susceptible to things like short-term memory loss, information overload, sleep deprivation, and distractions. But how do these machines actually learn? Well, while it may be easy for a human to know the difference between a cat and a dog, for a computer, not so much. You see, when you're only considering physical appearance, the difference between cats and dogs can be a little gray. You can say cats have pointed ears and dogs have floppy ears, but those rules aren't universal. Between tail length, fur texture, and color, there are a lot of options. And that means a lot of tedious rules someone would have to program manually to help a computer spot the difference. But remember, machine learning is about making machines learn like humans. And like any toddler, that means they have to learn by experience. With machine learning, programs analyze thousands of examples to build an algorithm. It then tweaks the algorithm based on if it achieves its goal. Over time, the program actually gets smarter. That's how machines like IBM's Watson can diagnose cancer, compose classical symphonies, or crush Ken Jennings at Jeopardy. Some programs even mimic the way the human brain is structured, complete with neural networks that help humans, and now machines, solve problems. Generations have long imagined the ramifications of AI, visualizing a society where machines seek revenge and wreak havoc on human society. However, the more logical and pressing question is, how will AI affect your job? Will it make your work obsolete? Just like the Industrial Revolution, it's not human versus machine, it's human and machine versus problem. The point is that artificial intelligence helps you accomplish more in less time, taking on the repetitive tasks of your job while you master the strategy and relationships. That way, humans can do what they do best, be human. All right. So this was actually quite interesting. Um, she branched out AI into a very important word called machine learning. As a matter of fact, a lot of people say that AI or artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know, they're the same thing. When someone says machine learning, right away you're talking about AI. So machine learning is the method, just, you know, when you say machine learning, you can instantly know it's a method to basically let a machine learn on its own. So the way to do that is by thinking, how does a toddler learn or a baby? I mean, very simple. If you make a toddler look at, it, at a cat, for instance, and a dog, then you can instantly start to see the differences between them. But for a computer, it's much more sophisticated than that. A computer actually, once you give it thousands of data, for example, pictures of cats and pictures of dog, um, like a thousand picture of a cat and a thousand picture of a dog, and a computer starts to analyze like length of tail, color, you know, eye, eye width, eye height, ears, many, many, many different features. And this is what makes an AI much more smarter than like a human uh, is. Because us humans, we only see that the exterior of a cat or exterior of a dog. The, an AI actually can dig much deeper than us. So this is how a machine learns. Let's actually dig deeper into machine learning. First, starting by seeing how AI started back in the third, 350 BC, I mean, and then the early 20th century, all the way to the day, today, to, to, sorry, to today, where we have machine learning, predictive models, you know, commercial AI, like buying humanoid robots, for example, Sophie, that we all know about, and educational awareness. These are all the different branches of AI. As discussed, we have machine learning, and then that digs deeper into deep learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning. We have natural language processing, which is how Siri operates, and we'll actually play a game now that uses this method of teaching uh, to work in the game. And then we have, see, robotics is a very small branch in AI. 
we have many more branches than Dacia. Machine learning, NLP, expert systems, vision, which uh, is used for your face ID in a phone, for instance, face recognition, image recognition, speech recognition that translates text to speech, also used by uh, Siri. So let's talk about machine learning. You know, allowing a machine to figure out if, like a picture of a fruit is an apple or not an apple. So a method of machine learning right here, why do we need machines to learn? Very important, as I mentioned, data. I mentioned in the video that 90% of the world's data has been generated in the past two years. So let's take an example. Two years ago, let's say we had a million, a million data. Of course, we had much more, but let's just assume we had a million. Two years later, we had 10 million, so a 90% increase. Humans actually don't have the time or the capability to process all of this data. So when I say process this data, let's actually give you an example. For instance, how many people are in the UAE today? Let's approximate and say it's 10 million, you know, round up. How many are aged above 18? Let's assume it's 75% of the 10 million. So 7.5 million people are aged above 18 in the UAE. If we assume that each person makes three purchases a day, you know, you go to the supermarket or the mall or, you know, wherever, and you make three purchases a day, that is a total of 22.5 million purchases. So you've got 22.5 set of, sets of data, okay? Let's, let's consider that it looks like this, you know, with your name, your age, the amount that you spent today, your balance on your card, and where you spent it. So you spent city center today, 900 dirhams. Uh, Khaled here spent 85 dirhams in, on fast food today, and he's very rich. He has 800,000 dirhams in his bank account. And then there's 22.5 more rows of debt, right? Because we said there's 22.5 purchases made a day. So a human being can't actually sit there and process all this debt, correct? It's almost impossible. Even the most, the most intelligent human in the world cannot process 22.5 million data a day. So we need an AI or a computer to do this for us. And the reason is because you can actually take out very important or useful information from this data, like where are the most active areas of payment? Or uh, what is the most purchased product in a, in a supermarket? And then that supermarket would actually load that product more to make more money. You know, the likes and dislikes of people at certain areas. Also, police can use that data to track someone, you know, with the gender and age. So it's very important. Data is a very, very important tool for AI. Let's actually jump in and discuss the final concept, which is the risks and benefits of AI, and then we'll play a game together. So the risk, uh, the misconception of AI, you know, about robots taking over the world and becoming way more uh, smarter than humans, that is actually a theory that we'd like to call super intelligence. So we don't call it artificial intelligence anymore. It's called super intelligence. So super intelligence is basically a theory where people assume that um, the AI will become basically possess intelligence that is far more superior than a human can, and he'll become more, um, you know, smarter than a human and take over, uh, like, the world. Let's say we have, like, a million robots and we all gave them AI. They became way more smarter than us. They'll take over that city or the world. And this is just a theory. Uh, the reason people make these the such theories is because AI is a new concept at the end of the day. It's a new technology that people haven't really um, expressed or explored fully and the reason because people haven't explored it fully people start to make theories about it at the end of the day should we panic definitely not this is just any new technology let's assume let's like basically go back 20 years ago we didn't have or like 30 years ago we didn't have wi-fi or smartphones and then once wi-fi came out the internet came out smartphones came out people weren't panicking thinking oh my god the internet's going to take over the world or all that with ai it's the same concept you don't need to be um panicking about it uh, or, you know, thinking that it's going to take over the world and all that. In conclusion, um, let's discuss what we did so far and then uh, actually, as a matter of fact, I'd like to show you the game or the activity that I'd like you to participate in. This is a very unique example that shows um, how, like a, basically a branch of AI and how it's used in our world today. So I'll share my screen and show you this game right here called Quick draw. So with quick draw, let's actually play the game. So quick draw is 
I mean, I'm just going to show you how it is right away. It asks us, for example, to draw six different images. That's the game. First image is a submarine. Again, it's telling me to draw something that is difficult, but I'll try my best. So I'll just I draw like it. a potato. Or pond. Or shoe. Oh, yeah. I know. Huh? It's submarine. All right. So it guessed right away, even though the drawing was terrible, it guessed right away that it was a submarine. Now it's asking for a baseball bat. So I see potato. Or clarinet. Or trombone. Or nail. Okay, so there, maybe that's a bad drawing. I see cup. Make it a bit bigger, or big. clarinet. Oh, I know. Right it's baseball bat. Guess baseball bat. Let's do a hammer. I see circle. Or street light. Or knee. Oh, I know. It's hammer. Okay. I'm going to skip the truck because that's a big one. Okay, passport. I see line. Or diving board. Or shoe. Or butterfly. Oh, I know. It's passport. Right away. And then cake. I see pond. Or shoe. Or hot dog. Or sandwich. Or hamburger. Okay. Oh, I know. It's cake. Right. So it guessed all my drawings except the truck. I skipped it. I mean, I would love for you guys to try it uh, on your own as well. I'll actually go along and explain how this game is guessing what I'm doing. So again, remember I said data is a very important tool in AI. Let's actually visit the data that this game uses. There's actually 50 million drawings. So what do 50 million drawings look like? So as you can see, over 15 million players have contributed millions of drawings playing quick draw. So as I've just played, you saw I drew some, um, I drew like a hammer and all that. It saves this drawing to use it later on. For instance, quick draw can guess all these different objects car, carrot, you know, castle, or chair. If I click on chair right here, I'll see thousands and thousands of images of chairs. As a matter of fact, there's 200,000 plus chair drawings made by real people. So when Quick Draw asks you to draw a chair, what, it, what happens is you start to draw the chair and Quick Draw instantly starts to compare it with the data that is stored. So all these 200,000 plus images of chairs Quick draw starts to compare it to this data and then makes the guess. So if you draw anything that is close to any of these 200,000 plus images, then quick draw, it will be very easy for quick draw to guess your drawing. Even for like a car right here, we have 160,000 images of cars uh, right here that quick draw can compare it to. So this method of uh, AI right here is called image recognition. If you remember, AI was. Uh, you know, uh, branched out into many different areas. Image recognition was one of them. So image recognition, this game right here uses image recognition as a method of guessing. I have another game that I would like to share with you called Symantris. So let me just make sure that it's sharing the screen. Symantris is actually a word association game also powered by machine learning. It here, it uses uh, NLP or natural language processing. So quick draw used um, image recognition, Symantris uses NLP or natural language processing. Um, this is slightly more difficult game to play, but it's still as fun. Uh, I'll show you how it's played and I would love for you guys to try along with me. And I'll give you guys five to 10 minutes to try along as well. So you can click on play arcade. So you see some words, I'll actually stop the sound. So you see some words that are listed right here. What it's asking for is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word guitar or the word labeled in blue. So for me, it's music. I type in music. It basically lists them for the most accurate word to the, to the uh, least accurate. So you see piano was the first one related to music. The second one was guitar. Third one is kitten, not sure why, and so on. So let's go to the second word. All the words that are in the uh, blue highlighted area will be canceled and you'll go to the second word. So here I have frozen. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is movie, but you can do like cold. And you see cold actually relates to frozen as the first sorted word. Motorcycle, I would say vehicle and so on. Train would be travel. Breakfast, I would say food. All right. So we get how it works. 
lemonade, drink, or maybe sour. So for every word I type, it doesn't have to be a synonym to the word that is highlighted in blue. All that it needs to be is related to the word. And the AI is trained using natural language processing to relate the word that you type to the word that is highlighted. So dog would be pet, garden would be green. For instance, if I write a word that doesn't relate, like hospital would be house. Okay, it worked. <laughs> Scissors would, let's say, um, rock. Again, I think that's gonna work. Doesn't, see? It ranks them. Rock queen was ranked the first one. Bicycle was the second. Dinosaur is one of them as well. Scissors would be sharp, that works, and so on. So I'll give you guys some time, maybe you can play around with to these two games, quick draw and some answers. I'll go back to the main screen. So remember, this is a very important concept that I wanted you guys to know today. Um, two main concepts that I, would, I wanted to make sure that stuck to your head after today's workshop was that artificial intelligence is not a scary concept. <coughs> artificial intelligence is actually a brand new technology that is, in my opinion, very important for everyone to know about. And it's very important for people to actually start implementing AI into their code or machines. And it's actually uh, divided into many different branches, starting with machine learning, which is the most famous. Machine learning is a method to actually allow artificial machines, uh, you know, your phones, your laptops, to start to learn on their own. And this is where the idea or the risk comes. Because you're saying that you're going to allow machines to learn on their own, if you give it enough time, aren't they going to learn to become more powerful than us? No. In my opinion, if I choose what they learn, then they'll never learn anything that I do not know. For instance, if I go ahead and talk to a child like right now, whatever I tell the child, he'll know. But if whatever I don't tell the child, he won't know. And this is the same concept. Whatever I give the machine, it will know. And whatever I don't, it won't. Another branch of artificial intelligence is natural language processing, which consists of classification, text generation, question answering, just like Siri does, um, and also semantics. Another, another one is vision or image recognition, which we saw in quick draw. For every image that I drew, um, although it's handwriting, but still it's considered an image, it will guess using image recognition and machine vision. So machine vision, when we say machine vision, it's not like human eyes, it's actually just the camera or whatever you're capturing on the screen. We've got speech, which is speech to text or text to speech, also used in Siri and various other talking platforms like Alexa or Cortana from Windows. And then we finally have robotics, which is a small branch of AI. We see um, robotics in Sophie, for example, which is a very famous um, humanoid robot uh, made by, sorry, very sorry about that, made by um, a certain university or a person. And it's actually one of the most famous humanoid robots. Um, as a challenge, actually, I would like you guys to research about Sophie. Um, maybe three years ago, you'll see how she was much, I don't want to say dumber, but three years later, she, become much smart. she became much smarter because of how many times it interacted with the humans. So the more time it interacted with humans and humans spoke to it, it became smarter and managed to actually answer in a more common sense way or a more understandable way. So this is just how AI works with experience. So in conclusion, let me just reach the conclusion page. Um, in conclusion, and this session allowed you guys to understand how humans think and learn um, and how we can implement this idea into machines, understand what AI is and differentiate it from the movies. So that is very important. Uh, I don't want you guys to think that AI is uh, whatever you see in the movies. It's actually much broader than that. And uh, clearly identify what technologies enable AI today. So, I mean, with Netflix recognition, recommendation systems, you know, Amazon, Google Maps, uh, Tesla driving, uh, self-driving cars and all that. And then finally, the benefits and risks of this technology going forward. So I want you guys to just um, pay attention to what I'm about to say. Uh, your teachers are going to be sharing with you a questionnaire. Um, I don't know if you're going to be sharing it at the moment or by the end of the day. The questionnaire is going to ask you to type in your email address and your full name. 
and as well as uh, ask you some questions about AI that you learned in this session. Um, as a matter of fact, the first three students that managed to answer the questions correctly are going to be winning vouchers from us at Fun Robotics, uh, which are going to be consisting of 50% discounts, 25% discounts, and 15% discounts on the various courses that we offer here at Fun Robotics. So it's a very nice gift that I would like you all to maybe try and participate in the questionnaire and we will be conducting the, um, you know, the correction of your answers and we'll be announcing the winners on your social media, um, on social media. Again, um, thank you so much for attending. I would like you all to take a look at the Fund Robotics channel that you see below. Uh, if you'd like to know more about AI or any other STEM related field, um, I would like you guys to subscribe to the channel and also um, maybe turn on notifications because we're going to be holding some live sessions in the future, which are also going to be having um, some uh, competition prizes and all that just like today. So again, the te teachers are going to be sharing with you a questionnaire, which I'd like you guys to complete. And the first three students that complete the questionnaire and answer correctly are going to be winning with us some vouchers, which we're going to be sharing with you on email and we're going to contact you about it. Anybody who has any questions about us as an organization, you can visit the YouTube channel and subscribe or give us a call. Uh, thank you guys again. My name was Rasim and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the session and I hope I'll see you some other day. Thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.